Welcome to Fun with Drilling Engineering. A deep borehole of several kilometers depth cannot be drilled down in a single run. You start drilling from the surface with a large diameter. As the section gets unstable or shows any operational difficulties, the drill string is stripped out and then a steel tube, a casing, is installed in the borehole and cemented firmly in place. Then you run into the borehole with a drill string and a smaller bit that fits through the first casing. And the next section is drilled until the second casing is set and cemented in place. Then the third section is drilled again, cased and cemented, and so on and so forth until you arrive in the reservoir. Now one could of course think, what a mess, see how my borehole has become so small. But in fact, deep boreholes are planned exactly the other way around. They are planned from the bottom upwards. For planning a well, we need three specifications the target depth of the well, the diameter of the last casing string, and a geological profile. The geological profile helps us to identify where casings will have to be set. The geological profile tells us how many casings we need on our way from the reservoir to the surface. But which diameter should our casings have? We already have learned that the diameter of the last casing is given. If we choose a small diameter for the next larger casing, this casing will be quite cheap since less material is needed also, smaller diameter casings are relatively light, so we can handle them with a smaller and a cheaper drilling rig. This is good, but on the other hand, it is very difficult to fill the tight annulus between the casing with cement. The cement just does not spread evenly. So obviously, it appears to be a good idea to use a larger diameter outer casing. Larger pipes are more expensive and we need a bigger drilling rig at the surface. But on the other hand, we have the advantage that the cement is evenly distributed, as you can see. So obviously there's need for optimization. What is the optimal casing size for such a borehole? Luckily, there is the API, American Petroleum Institute, which has existed for almost 100 years. The API standardizes everything that is required for deep drilling engineering. There are already over 800 standards in which practically everything is specified. If anything works well in the field, then it is included in these API standards. For example, if there is a 16-inch casing set in place, the API standard states that it is practical to continue drilling with a 14 3 quarter bit. So with this 14 3 quarter drill bit, we drill out the 16 inch casing. And when the 16 inch section is finished, we secure it with the 11 7 8 casing. And then we continue drilling with a 10 5 8 drill bit. And so on and so on. The picture here behind me shows the API diameter series. Of course, we drill from the surface down to the reservoir. But the planning is actually done from the bottom up. Therefore, I have drawn the arrows from the bottom upwards, as you can see. So how do we use this chart? We start at the bottom of, at a certain diameter for the production casing. And from there, we move along the lines to the top. If we move upwards along the solid lines, the API standard tells us there's enough analog space between the casings and the borehole walls for a proper cementing job. If you also look closely, there are a few parts with dotted lines, which you can also move upwards. But if you move along these lines, the analog spaces will be quite narrow, and you have to be very careful when cementing. You have to thoroughly check the quality of the cementing job afterwards. You will learn all this and so much more in our lecture, Basics of Drilling Engineering, which can be attended by anyone who is interested. We will be glad to welcome you in our classroom here in Freiburg. Look off.